السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام. Welcome to the uh, seminar of Know Your Rights. Hey everyone, good morning. I'm sorry, it's one thing I just wanted to take up. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to have all the imams and introduce themselves. So I'll start from the right side. One fifty fifty nine. I am Muhammad Manzul Karim. I'm Imam American Muslim Center. My name is Zakaria Mahmoud. I'm Imam Bayt al Sharif Masjid in Brooklyn. Muhammad Abdul Malik, Khatib Belal Masjid, Brooklyn. Muhammad Marin al Islam, Imam Parcha Star Jam Masjid, Bronx. Mufti Lutfur Rahman Qasimi, I'm the Secretary General of Safa Islamic Center, Manhattan. I'm Imam Jubair al Rashid. I'm Imam and Khatib Sunni Said Muslim Center, 391847. Thank you. I am Shah Mohammed Bujakir Hussain, Assistant Imam, Al Amin Jami Masjid, Astoria. I am Kaji Muslim Al Haq, Imam, Jasmin Islam Center, Al Mos, 721. I am Muhammad Abdul Sadiq, Imam, Jasmin Islam Center, 721. My name is Muhammad Abdullah, Imam Masjid Al Arqab, Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. Muhammad Abdul Mukhin, Imam Dar es Salaam Masjid, Jamaica. Walid Al Bakrawish, Imam of Andalusia Islamic Center, Yankers, Westchester, and Assistant Imam in '96. I'm Muhammad Shahidullah. I'm working in IT Islamic Television. And Imam Abdullah Kamal, Astoria Islamic Center, Astoria. Jazakallah khair, Jazakallah khair. Inshallah, so we'll just give to whoever the next one is. As I was telling the Imams. Uh, the CLEAR project provides free legal advice and representation to members of the Muslim community. We've been doing it since 2009. With me here are Miles Ashton and Tom Howe, who are members of the CLEAR project this year. Uh, Sister Naz Ahmed is an attorney uh, with the project as well. And, uh, you know, we're here to talk about, you know, what you should tell any of your community members or what you should do if someone from the FBI or someone from the NYPD comes and tries to ask questions. Very basic rights that apply to everyone in this country, regardless of immigration status, regardless of citizenship. Anyone in this country has these rights and should exercise these rights. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I told the Imams also that there's a lot of literature in the back in different languages that, inshallah, you can take back to your community. Again, very basic know your rights information that everyone should know in this country. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Now it's all yours. Wonderful. Um, so it's great seeing everyone here. Um, it's very important that religious leaders are learning how to exercise their rights. As Ramzi was saying before, you are pillars in your community, and it's very important for you to take away these lessons to impart them on your congregants and the people within your community that may have questions about these. And as we've said multiple times, we are CLEAR. Um, that stands for Creating Law Enforcement Accountability and Responsibility. We serve specifically the Muslim, Arab, and South Asian communities within New York City. Can everyone hear me? Do, you, do I need a microphone? Do we need it for the thing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we serve the Muslim, Arab, South Asian communities in New York City because, you know, our objective is to create law enforcement accountability and responsibility. And these are the communities that are disproportionately and unfairly targeted by NYPD and FBI and all the other law enforcement agencies on their supposed war on terror, okay? Um, so our presentation today is gonna basically be put two distinct parts. One is gonna be talking about what your rights are and explaining what they are and how to exercise these. And it's very important to listen to what we're saying. And it's going to be pretty repetitive, but again, exercising your rights will be repetitive with law enforcement. That, know, that shows you that you're doing it right. But it's also important to listen closely to what we're saying because we're also going to be doing some skits, some sketches, some acting, where we'll show you a law enforcement interaction that may or may not be so good. And then you can tell us whether we were doing it right or wrong. And then we will be looking for volunteers to come up and show us how to properly exercise their rights. Um, so talking about law enforcement interactions with your community, 
Um, we know for a fact that since 9-11, at least 200 mosques and at least 15 Islamic schools have been investigated by NYPD and law enforcement within the city. Um, as I'm sure you know, news shows that it isn't exactly letting up right now. And as we were talking about, there is this climate right now where so many people are using anti-Islamic rhetoric and trying to ramp up the fear of the brothers and sisters that live in this country and are causing no problems whatsoever. Um, so I'm wondering how many of you have heard of law enforcement coming to people that they know? Or talking about somebody that comes into your masjid yes, that comes to, yes, to spy. spy. Yeah. We call those informants. So people that, you know, work for NYPD or cops or something like that, that come into the masjid to come in and, you know, ask questions, listen to what people, you know, what the message is that day, what, what the lecture is, what people are talking about. Um, there are other kinds of forms, you know. Um, how many people have heard of informants or people working for NYPD going into, you know, restaurants or community, like community spaces, community areas. about their personal life or strange questions about the deen, uh, you know, asking for the meaning of certain words, uh, you know, that, that you hear a lot in the, in the media. 
And you know, this is a normal part of the job for the imam to, to give advice. But unfortunately, a lot of the imams are very afraid that you know, this person could be from the police, this person could be an undercover or an informant. And so I've, you know, we've worked with imams who tell us, normally I should, they'll, they'll say this, they'll say, normally I should be having these conversations one-on-one, -on -one. this is my job. But because I'm so afraid, I have to bring in someone else to be a witness. So that this person I'm talking to, you know, can't later go on and say that I said one, two, three, when in fact I said A, B, C, you know? So there's, there's a lot of fear and concern among the imams that is stopping a lot of the imams from doing the work that they're supposed to be doing in the community. And I'm sure that this is a feeling that you have all experienced as well. So I, I want to encourage each one of you, if you're having these kinds of fears, which are perfectly normal, if you're concerned that people are coming, they're asking you questions in private that you, you, know, you know you should answer, but you're afraid of answering, come and talk to us, because we can advise you, inshallah, about how to do that in a way that's safe for you, that's safe for your community, but while you're also doing your job. As, uh, as, as an imam. So uh, we completely understand the concern and this is not the first time we hear it. We've heard it from many imams, unfortunately. Let me just, uh, let me just, uh, let me just, uh, let me just, 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 let Normally, when we were in the 9-11 and we were in the 9-11 and we were in the hesitation, we were in the 1-1 and we were in the 1-1 and we were এখন আপনারা এই জিনিসটা করবেন না এটা যদি আপনি মনে করেন যে আপনার কোনো ধরনের সন্দেহ থাকে তার সম্পর্কে আপনার কোনো জানার পরিচয় যদি না থাকে তাইলে এট লিস্ট আরেকজনকে নিয়ে বসবেন তাইলে সব সময় আপনার সাক্ষী থাকলো সে কোনো আর বানায় কিছু বলতে পারবে না এটা অত্যন্ত কমন যিনি বলতেছে যে তারা প্রথমে আসে তার ব্যক্তিগত ব্যাপার সে বলবে তার ওই তার আপনার সাথে ক্লোজ হওয়ার জন্য যত কাছে আসবে ব্যক্তিগত ভাবে তার সমস্যা যখন বলবেন আপনি তার প্রতি সহানুভূতি দেখাবেন আলটিমেটলি ইউ গেট ক্লোজ টু আপনার সাথে ক্লোজ রিলেশনশিপ হবে তারপরে যেটা সে আপনার সাথে চেষ্টা করবে আপনি করতে যদি এই ধরনের কোনো সন্দেহ থাকে আপনার চেষ্টা করবেন যাতে আপনার একা না বসেন আরেকজনকে নিয়ে বসবেন This is a really good question. The, the Miranda rights, that has to do for when you're placed under arrest. Right. And what we're talking about here is right. you're not under arrest. They're yes. just coming to ask you questions. So two different, two different things. And, and when you're not under arrest and they come to ask you questions, they're not going to tell you your rights. And that's why we're here today, because we want you to know your rights. Even when you're not under arrest, you have rights. But they're not going to tell you that unless you're under arrest. So that's why we want everyone to know that even if you're not under arrest, you still have rights. And these are the rights we're going to talk about today. Let me explain. This is very important. This is what he said. When you said about the Miranda rights, you said that you have to be arrested. 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 এটা হলো মেরান্ডা রাইটস আর আপনি আমরা যেটা ওনারা যেটা প্রেজেন্ট করতে সেটা হলো অ্যারেস্টের আগে যখন তারা আপনাকে অ্যাপ্রোচ করবে যাতে তারা ওই ওই সময় আপনার কিভাবে আপনাদের রাইট যেটা আছে সেটা তখন আপনাদের রাইট আছে ওই রাইট সম্পর্কে আপনাদেরকে সে ওনারা আলোচনা করতে চান ইংলিশ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ওকে হোয়াট রামজি ওয়াজ সেইং আর্লিয়ার আম ওয়ার টকিং অ্যাবাউট আ লিমিটেড সিচুয়েশন ফ্রম হোয়াট উই ওয়ার সেইং আর্লিয়ার এন্ড एवरीवन ওয়াজ শেয়ারিং देयर এক্সপেরিয়েন্সেস অফ what they've heard and how they've heard about people interacting with cops, NYPD, FBI, and things like that. A lot of the things that we were talking about here were informants. What we're talking about today is not informants. Do you want to translate? No, that's fine. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, um, we're talking about encounters at the home. We call this when an agent knocks on your door. So when law enforcement comes to somebody's home, knocks on the door, and tells you that they are a law enforcement agent. We do provide Know Your Rights trainings on informants as well. Yeah, that's something very important. When you did about this, and the account that you are allowed to be shared, informant is shared. Informant, when you are allowed to be shared, you are allowed to be shared. 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 So how, how, how are you going to recognize that he is a 
He's gonna, he's gonna from introduce himself. Or from FBI, from whatever. How, how uh, we, we, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, very good question. That's yes. a good question. We will and we will address that later on in this presentation. Okay. But but the, but the larger difference is clear, inshallah, yes. as Brother Abdul Aziz explained that you know we're talking about people who will tell you, I'm a detective, I'm an agent, yes. as opposed to someone who's asking very strange questions, but you don't know if you know. They're not going to tell you I'm an informant well, like or I'm an undercover. When I came first in my mosque, uh, the previous day, two or three other years before, so some people, they said there are some people, they are, they are spy on the FBI mm -hmm. agents. And unfortunately, I called one brother, and so many times he, I invited him. And after that, the newspaper came that he, he was a, uh, from the FBI. Mm -hmm. And he was our many mosque in, uh, speaker. Mm -hmm. And my, my, son, my brother and my son, Akika, I informed and invited, invited him. He came in his lecture. After that, we saw that he, in the newspaper, that he was actually an FBI agent. Do you understand? So, yes. uh, this, what you said that uh, informant, this is a difference. But sometimes, uh, maybe the FBI, uh, some people come and they say, we, I'm from that person, and so I want to know. And uh, we are scared because of that situation. We don't know how to do it. Then, if you explain to them. Exactly. Informant is a definition of shadow yeah. and, and, and let me and let me say one thing if Brother Abdul Aziz can translate this sure. as well. Okay. You know, we do a completely different workshop on informants. And you'll see back there there's there's one piece of paper that talks to you about your rights when you're talking to someone who you know is from the police, and then there's another piece of paper that tells you about your rights when you're dealing with someone who isn't telling you, you know, who might be an informant, might be an undercover. So inshallah, if, if this is a concern at your message, we're more than happy to come to your message, inshallah, and do the different workshop on informants. Because yeah, yeah. it's a very different situation, uh, and, and we're very thankful that you brought this up. Tadaru paper workshop for the Korean Munora, with a paper if a flyer or send a picture as a paper that's a little bit. And do the after that most in the Monocoran either in a good situation as the after the issue paper, after the Jana Durkar, after the Musulman Jana Durkar, after the Mosti, the Arbic Shala, a shave with a worship for me. Okay, so there's a lot of people who are So Miles has been talking a lot about law enforcement or, or police. Um, I want to be clear about the agencies that we might be talking about when we say law enforcement or the police. Um, so we've mentioned FBI. Uh, FBI is certainly an agency that could show up um, at, at people's doors. The NYPD is, is another agency um, that does that frequently as well. Um, uh, what about other agencies? Are there other agencies that people have heard of uh, that, that question people? Immigration? Immigration. Yeah, so ICE, um, the Customs and Border Patrol, uh, maybe doing some questioning. So uh, I want to be clear that when we, when we do say law enforcement, we could be talking about any one of those agencies. We could be talking about FBI, NYPD, ICE, um, and any one of those agencies. Uh, so why, this is a question for, for you all, why might law enforcement question people? Why might they show up to, to someone's door? Maybe a member of your community's door. law enforcement, police, because of security purpose, maybe this is security purpose. They're gonna ask. It's not no problem because if I'm innocent and somebody asks me something, I can give answer. But uh, this is a security. Any and every country they are uh, enforcement and uh, the people they can ask. But some say it can. But it is not about that. It is about that they can ask the people. Action law enforcement representative, police, ballan, FBI, ballan. After the other Japan Ashbe, Apne Monacotus and Japan innocent. Kin the Apnidi Kuno representation Chara, Kuno knowledge Chadri Kothabolan, Apni Jakothabolan, E Kothabolo, after against it, will go against you. So it a keep training the origin. So that's, I think, I think, I think yes. brother Abba has said what we're about to say. Yes. Yeah. Which is what the, what the brother said, what the Imam said, is what every normal yes. human being thinks. thinks. Yes. Which is, I have nothing, I've done nothing wrong. So why not talk to them? So this is normal. It's normal to think this. But what we're going to talk about today are the reasons why, in the United States, you should be thinking differently. 
In the United States, you should respond differently. You should exercise your rights. Um, we're not saying don't talk. We're just saying never talk without a lawyer. And, and we're going to explain to you why it's so important to have a lawyer in the room with you when you talk to the FBI or the NYPD. That's that, because this is a very key thing. Most people in our community will say, I've done nothing wrong, I should just talk to them. And what we want to teach everyone today, and inshallah you can teach the members of your community, is why you should hold back, and instead of saying that, you should say, I'm going to talk to you with my lawyer. My lawyer is going to get back to you. Because that's the safer way to do it for yourself and for your community. And we're going to talk about the reasons for that today. That's a very important point. So just have to laugh. I mean, let me say in English yeah. that I'll translate. Imagine you have how many millions of people in, in New York? Eight million. Eight million people. Eight million people, people living in the United in, in New York City alone. Why are they coming to you? There's a reason for it. I'm going to add a million loop in New York. I'm going to add a million loop in New York. I'm going to add a million loop in New York. I'm going to add a million loop in New York. I'm going to add a million loop in New York. Under no circumstances should you talk to them without an attorney. I don't know if you have a lot of people who are in the trap. I don't know if you have a lot of people who are in the trap. I don't know if you have a lot of people who are in the trap. I don't know if you have a lot of people who are in the trap. So, so we're talking about, the, the, so they might show up to someone's door because they actually suspect some sort of crime, right? Or they suspect that you know something about a crime. But we've found, um, and I think, I think that we've been saying that most of the time when they show up, most of the time when they're asking questions, they're trying to, to fish for information, and they don't even suspect that a crime has occurred. Um, there's, there's nothing in particular that they're searching for, they're just looking for information um, about, about you, your family, and your community. Uh, and th this, uh, of course, applies for um, all of the uh, congregants to your, to your masjids as well. Um, and we've found uh, that, and we've, we've been saying this, we've found that um, answering those questions without an attorney opens all of these individuals, opens your community, yourself, up to um, potential danger. Uh, and you may think that uh, if you answer the questions and if you're completely innocent, and if you're answering the questions in a, in a right way, if you're answering the questions in a way that, that, that law enforcement likes, then that might make them go away. Right? You answer their questions and they won't show up anymore. Uh, they're, going, they're going to know that you're innocent, that they're going to know that you're not doing anything wrong. But we've found that, that once you start answering their questions without an attorney, once you start talking to them, they'll keep on coming back to you for information. They'll keep on uh, looking, looking to you as someone who is cooperating with them, as someone who, who is willing to give information um, about the entire community. Um, so this, right, this is another reason not to talk to the law enforcement unless you're with an attorney. Um, and I mean, the, one of the, um, one of the other things to, to, to mention is that oftentimes when law enforcement uh, show up to people's homes, law enforcement know usually more about the law than the normal civilian, than the normal person who's just going, minding their own business, who's just living their life. Uh, and, and the law enforcement can, can utilize that um, to potentially, um, to potentially pull information from people that they want to hear, that may or may not be true that, that they want to hear. Um, and this is another reason why it's best to speak with law enforcement uh, when there's an attorney around. Yeah. That's right, that's very important. When I read the book, it's very important to show you the book. I'm going to go to the top, 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 शेवन भावे आपने के प्रश्नों तक शे तुले धर बे कर शे लोग संपूर्ण के आपना रामर्थ के बेशी जाने तो आपने के प्रश्नों जवाबे कोर बे आपने जो शब्दों में ताश्चित है प्रश्न उत्तर दें कोऑपरेट कोरे शे प्रश्नों उत्तरे मत मध्य किंतु आपना जो पहचान होती पड़े एवं एक है ने जो भी पहचान होते अबर बार बार शे आपन आपने शुद्ध आपने क्यों भी बोलते फिल्टर से ना आपने एंटायर कम्युनिटी के आपने बोलते से मन करो आमर कोठे बोला आमदे मस्त दीवान शब्द के सिक्के आश्चर्य आश्चर्य कोर जिगिश कोर्ट से 
উনার ব্যাপারে জিজ্ঞেস করব তারপর জিজ্ঞেস করব তো আমি তো আব্দুল আজিজ তুমি কি না কেন হ্যাঁ কি নেই তো আমি তো আব্দুল আজিজ কে দেখলাম কালকে একজনের সাথে চোদ্দ উনার কি চিনো কিনা এইভাবে একটার পর একটা তারা লিডিং করে তারা হলো ট্রেন্ড পিপল টু আপনার কাছ থেকে ইনফরমেশন নেওয়ার জন্য তাদের ট্রেনিং আছে আপনার আমার ট্রেনিং নাই আমরা শুধু ইনোসেন্টলি তাদের সাথে কথা বলতেছি এই জন্য কোনোভাবে এই জিনিসটা সবসময় মনে রাখতে হবে যখনই কোনো ল এনফোর্সমেন্ট আপনার দরজায় আসবে আপনাকে পার্টিকুলারলি পিক আপ করবে যে ওনার সাথে আলাপ করবো তার কার একটা কারণ আছে দেখে আসছে সে অতএব আপনাকে তখন থেকে সতর্ক হতে হবে যে আমি উকিল ছাড়া কথা বলবো না আপনি যত ইনোসেন্টলি থাকেন just add one yeah. thing uh, because this is so important I think brother Abdul Aziz said it and Tom said it before but just again remember and a lot of times they're trained professionals right so they're going to make you feel comfortable and they're going to make you think hey they're going to say to you this is a normal conversation why do you want to involve a lawyer you know why do you want to do it that way why do you want to do it the hard way you're a leader in your community you should just be comfortable <coughs> talking to me but you have to remember they know the law you don't know the law they're trained in interrogation, they're trained in getting information, you're not trained. Um, so already there's a disadvantage. And when you, when you bring, when you exercise your right, a very basic right that everyone in this country has, to bring a lawyer into that conversation, you're rebalancing it. You're bringing someone on your side who, who knows the law like they know the law, and who can act as a mediator between you and them. Now there are other disadvantages that we're going to talk about, uh, but I, want, I wanted to, to make clear that point, yes. that there's an imbalance when you're dealing with someone who is from the government, and you want to correct that imbalance by bringing in a lawyer. And there's nothing controversial about what I'm saying. This is the most basic thing. When President Bill Clinton was under investigation, he didn't talk to the FBI by himself. What did he do? He brought a lawyer. When Martha Stewart was under FBI investigation, what did she do? She I brought a lawyer. So this is very basic things that, that everyone in this country who have been here for generations, they know this and they do it. And, and we think our community, inshallah, should do the same thing. Yeah. Just, we have to say, I have to check with it. I'm a dead culture, 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 I'm a dead পুলিশ কিন্তু ওইটাকে ইউজ করবে তুমি এই কমিউনিটির এত বড় একজন নেতা তুমি এই মসজিদের ইমাম তুমি এইটা সেটা তোমার তো কোনো ভয় নাই তুমি তো কোনো ভুল করতে দেন তুমি একজন উকিল নিয়ে কথা বলবো কেন তোমার তো তুমি তো নিজে এনাপ সে আপনাকে আমরা যেটা দেশে বলি যে সে আপনাকে সামহাও মেক ইউ ফিল করে আপনাকে ভালো ফিল করবে যে তুমি এত বড় নেতা তোমার এত বুদ্ধি থাকা সত্ত্বেও উকিলও দরকার কি আমরা অনেকে কিন্তু এই ট্র্যাপের মধ্যে পড়ি যে আমাকে যখন ফ্রেজ করে যে আব্দুল আজিজ সাচ এ বিগ লিডার সো এন্ড সো এন্ড আই এম জাস্ট পুশিং দিস I'm going to open up myself for everything. I mean, shop, I will open up our kitchen, I'm going to keep up with it. I will do it. Agent, no one is able to say that I have a law enforcement group that I should pay for a train, that a training the assay, law, that I'm not a paramount thing. Beshi Jane, Shabu, we have to do the apnea, do a book, I'm not sure that I can tell you that I have an equal footing. I have someone who has someone who has to hold. তারা যখন কথা বলবে তারা ওর লোর চিন্তা করবে যে এখানে উকিল আছে সে এটাকে ডিফারেন্ট উত্তর দিবে এটা কিভাবে লোর আন্ডারে কিভাবে উত্তর দিতে শুনে জানবে তো কোনোভাবে আমি আবার এটাকে আমি এমফাসাইজ আমি বারবার করতেছি এই জন্য আপনি মনে রাখবেন যে দে আর কামিং টু ইউ আউট অফ এইট মিলিয়ন পিপুল দেয়ার রিজন ফর ইট বিকজ ইজ নট বিকজ দে লাইক ইউর পিকচার দে লাইক ইউ ইউর সো সো নো দে দে আর নেভার ইউর ফ্রেন্ডস তারা কোনো তারা কিন্তু আপনার বন্ধু না আমরা আরেকটা দিস নাদার থিং আই আই গোন সে ইন ইংলিশ দ্যাট ইউ উইল আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড সাম অফ আস ফল ফর ইট দে উইল কাম ওকে আব্দুল আজিজ আই উইল টেক এ পিকচার উইথ ইউ ইউ ক্যান পুট ইট অন ইয়োর পোস্টার দিস ইজ সামথিং অ্যানাদার থিং উই বিকাম সো ফ্রেন্ডলি বিকজ উই ওপেন आवर সেলফ উইথ সামবডি হু ইজ নট অ্যামংস্ট আস সামবডি হু হ্যাজ এন এডুকেশন হু কামস উইথ এ টাই হু কামস টু স্পিক গুড ইংলিশ উই ওপেন आवर সেলফ আমরা করি কি আমরা ফটো তোলার জন্য মানুষকে বলার জন্য যে আমার অমুকের সাথে খাতির আছে সম্পর্ক আছে এটা বলার জন্য আমরা নিজেকে একেবারে বিক্রি করে দিই অনেক সময় এটা লিডারশিপের মধ্যে দেখবেন ইমামদের মধ্যে সবার মধ্যে আছে এটার ব্যাপারে আমরা এত বেশি হুঁশিয়ার হওয়া উচিত কারণ খেয়াল রাখবেন এই জিনিস দে আর নট ইউর ফ্রেন্ড দে আর ট্রেন্ড পার্সোনাল তারা আপনার বন্ধু না তারা এই তাদের ট্রেনিংই হইল টু গেট ইনফরমেশন ফ্রম ইউ দে আর নো দে নো হাউ টু মেক ফ্রেন্ডস উইথ ইউ তারা কিভাবে জানে আপনাকে আপনার আপন ভাই হয়ে যেতে পারে শুধু বি কেয়ারফুল এইসব ব্যাপারে আমরা আমরা আলোচনা করি
No, and before turning it back to Tom, there's one other point that I, that I feel it's important to make because we're in the presence of so many Imams. <coughs> you know, Claire has been representing people in the community since 2009. We've handled more than 200 cases at this point of people who were approached for questioning by the FBI, NYPD, Homeland Security. So what we've seen across these 200 cases, that a lot of times they're very nice to Imams. Because they want you to open the door to the community. So they will treat the Imams one way, so that when the community member comes to the Imam and says, the FBI wants to talk about to me, what should I do? Mm. They want the Imam to say, of course, they're very nice people, talk to them. But then when they talk to the people in your community, they're not going to be that nice. We have dozens of clients who have been threatened by the FBI with immigration issues, threatened in all kinds of ways. People who have been told you're never going to see your family again. People who have been told we're going to put you on a no-fly list. People who were put on. So they get very aggressive with community members uh, in a way that you as imams might never see. Because they want to get on your good side. Because they know that you're the gatekeeper. So they want you to open that gate. They don't, they don't want people in the community to exercise their rights the way other communities do. And they're going to act very surprised. They're going to say, well, whoa, I'm so surprised. Why are you talking about lawyers? But believe me. If, the, if that FBI agent or that detective has more than one week of experience, they've heard it before. They hear it all the time. It's the most basic thing when people say, mm, not without my lawyer. They're going to act surprised because they want to pressure you to open that gate. But really, they've heard it before. So you're, you're, you're the guardians of your community, and that's why they want to try to get on your good side, because they know that people will come to you for advice. And they want you to say, oh, no problem, you should talk to me. Don't, you don't need a lawyer. It's okay. They're nice people. But as Brother Abdul Aziz said, they're not necessarily your friends. We're not saying they're your enemies, but you know, they're, they're, doing, their, they're doing their job. And, and their job isn't necessarily to protect you know, this community or to tell this community about its rights. So that's why you have to be the ones who are going to know your rights. You have to be the ones who are going to educate the rest of the community about these very basic rights. আপনি ইমাম হিসেবে আপনার সাথে খুব ভালো সম্পর্ক করবে শুধু তা না আপনাকে হয়তো তার পেছনে দাওয়াত দিবে ক্যাপ্টেনের সাথে পরিচয় করে দিবে অর্থাৎ আপনার ভালো সাইডে থাকার জন্য যতটুকু করা দরকার করবে কারণ হলো তারা আপনার মসজিদে হয়তো অন্য কোনো আপনার মুসল্লিকে এসে টার্গেট করছে এবং ওই মুসল্লি যখন তারা এফবিআই অ্যাপ্রোচ করবে জিজ্ঞেস করবে তখন স্বভাবত মুসল্লি হয়তো আপনার কাছে আসবেন যে ইমাম সাহেব আমার তো এই অবস্থা কি করা যায় আপনি যখন বলবেন যে না খুব ভালো লোক जबिम এইটা ইমাম হিসেবে আপনাকে অত্যন্ত সতর্ক থাকতে হবে যে তারা যদি কেউ আসে আপনাকে পুলিশ স্টেশন থেকে আসবে এফবিআই আসবে ক্যাপ্টেন আসবে তারা করবে কিন্তু তাদের টার্গেট কিন্তু আরেকটা ও যখন আপনি আসবেন তখনই সাথে সাথে বলবেন যে না উকিল ছাড়া কথা বলবেন না যত পর ভালো সম্পর্ক থাকবে আপনার সাথে ইয়া এন্ড ওয়ার ওয়ার নট সেইং ডোন্ট স্পিক টু देम উইদাউট আ লয়ার when you observe a car accident or when you see a robbery or something like that we're saying don't talk to them without a lawyer when when they're coming to your to your place when they're coming to uh the community zone uh and so just to give a few examples of the kinds of things that our clients have been asked by law enforcement they've been asked things like what do you think of the arab spring um are you involved with the muslim student association who else is involved with that association what are they doing um how do you feel about israel uh what do you think about isis uh which do you follow any online lecturers which lecturers do you follow things like that just to as we said just to elicit information just to gain information um and so so what do we think why why is it best not to speak with law enforcement unless an attorney is there no i already mentioned it because of safe power we cannot be in safety let me ask let me ask one question um if 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 this FBI person comes to your home or to your masjid and asks you questions um 
is it legal for that FBI agent to lie to you? Okay, when you talk to say that the FBI agent of a police officer told the Ashlo, Ashapore, she eat a kill, Apraki Monaco, it a legal shape of Apraka the Mitako the whole way. Answer is it legal for Apraki Apraki Monaco and the shape? Ashlo, a shape of Kijish Kolo, a shape with trouble to say. For the FBI agent to lie to you. To lie to you. Is that legal? It's a key up from Monaco at a legal dinner. How many people think it is legal? Raise your hand if it's a Monaco and the legal it. Raise your hand if it's for them, I think. Okay, so, so, the one, yes. so the brother here says he thinks it's legal. His yes. brother says it's not legal. So raise your hand if you think it is legal for the FBI. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. No, legal or illegal? Illegal. No, no. Legal. Just to do this, legal is not going to be able to do this. Legal. Okay, and how many think that it is illegal for the FBI to lie? Illegal. So most people think it is illegal for the FBI to lie. And when we go into different communities in the city, most people think that. But the truth is what the minority thought. Yes. The minority was right. The minority said it is legal for the FBI to lie. And, and this is true. The FBI, the NYPD, as part of their job, they're allowed to lie to do their job. There's not, because you know, a lot of times they're dealing with criminals and they have to lie to deal with criminals, right? So, so, so it is legal for them to lie to you. Okay. So now, so now let me ask you this other question. How many people think it is legal for you to lie to them? Raise your hand if you think it's legal for you to lie to them. Okay, mashallah. So, because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we go into communities and they say, "Yes, I can, I can lie." But, but that's that's another one of. Go ahead. Muslim never lies. 